What's up guys, David from Sunday Sounds here, and today I've got something that came in the mail that I'm excited to talk about. Sennheiser reached out to us and asked if they could send us three of their most popular models of in-ear monitors. And in exchange, they just wanted us to share a review video with my honest opinion on how they stack up against each other and whether I'd recommend any of them to you if you're in the market for new in-ears for yourself or maybe for your worship team. We've done some in-ear reviews before here on the channel. It always stirs up a little bit of controversy. I know that this is a topic that many of you are interested in, so I'm excited to talk about these particular models today and see how they compare. So in exchange for our honest opinion on these units, Sennheiser sent them to us. They sent us the 100, 400, and 500 models of their IE Pro series. So one at a time, I'm gonna unbox them. I've got a little playlist on my iPhone with the beloved Apple dongle all ready to go. I'm gonna listen to the same songs three times with each set so I can compare them against each other. So let's start off with the 100 Pros. These retail for about $100. This is probably what you are most familiar with if you've used Sennheiser in-ears or similar for your own church. These have been around a long time sort of church music standard option. So they've got a good track record of reliability um, and the price for a long time uh, was one of the best options out there, especially compared to more expensive or custom in-ears. Okay, so I will say, um, you know, the outward construction between all three of these models uh, is remarkably similar, right? I'll see if there's any difference in the outward appearance other than I'm assuming, you know, maybe some additional weight um, as we get into the 400 and 500 series. Pretty standard cable here. One thing I really like about uh, sort of the traditional manufacturers of in-ears, uh, like Sennheiser, like Shure, is the thought that goes into the way that the cable mounts to the in-ear. Brands uh, like KZ, um, it's a pretty, just like a plug-in sort of thing, like a straight two pin. Um, but with these, um, it's a round dock, which actually means that the in-ear can rotate freely. And this uh, is actually something I think is a big benefit of this style of in-ear because when it's in your ear, that freedom of motion where it's not tied directly, um, it can swivel, makes it a lot more comfortable in your ear. It does tend, in my experience, to be more comfortable and stay in your ear more effectively. Okay, so got these ready to go. Um, they come with uh, silicone buds and I think some alternate sizes as well. And then it looks like a set of foam too. I'm just gonna stick with the silicone buds that are uh, right out of the box for all of these models. Another thing about these options compared to some of the other like Amazon brands is that the form factor is very lightweight. Construction of the outside is plastic, um, but it doesn't feel you know, shoddy or anything like that feels uh, feels just fine. And in the ear, it's really, really comfortable um, because it's lightweight, yes, but also, as I mentioned, because of that swivel um, at the connection point. And you also have that memory wire um, that you can form around your ear. So in terms of comfort, I do think that some of the uh, uh, brands like Sennheiser and Shure, those models, really get a lot of it right. All right, go ahead and give some music a listen here. Okay, so after some listening here with the 100 Pros, uh, these are like I remember them. The low end is not incredibly prominent, uh, which is I don't think what the 100 Pro is really supposed to be about. Uh, the mid-range uh, is adequate. Um, there's decent clarity and the highs are, are decent as well. Um, the width and the sense of space, I think, is where maybe these fall a little bit short. But in terms of just overall being an enjoyable listening experience, I think that these these do a fine job. And I think they are exceptionally comfortable to wear, which um, is a factor that sometimes gets ignored if we're talking about some of the, the big five or six driver options from KZ, um, brands like that. Those things are really heavy. They're hanging, you know, maybe a quarter inch or more out of the ear. And that's a factor uh, that affects the seal, which then in turn impacts the quality of the listening experience. I will say that even at loud volume here, um, I don't notice a ton of distortion. The audio maintains a good bit of clarity. So the IE100 Pros at $100, um, the comfort is exceptional. The build quality I think is, is adequate and good for $100. And then in terms of sound quality, um, I think there, there might be other options out there that sound better in the same price point. Um, but you're making some sacrifices potentially with comfort. Okay, let's go ahead and open up the 400 Pros. Now, uh, an interesting part of this discussion, in my opinion at least, is sort of 
the difference between these more expensive Sennheiser options uh, and some of the other uh, options out there, especially in, in Amazon land, the assumption is that the more drivers there are, the higher quality the sound, the wider the sound stage, uh, all of that sort of thing. And whether that's actually true, I have become a little bit skeptical of. If you watched our last big in-ear roundup video, you may remember that the model I ended up putting at the top of the list was from TFZ. Um, and those were single driver in-ears uh, above all the multi quad quadruple five six whatever uh, drivers from brands like KZ this single driver model um, sounded best to me over long periods of time and it was the one that I recommended at the top of the list and so the uh, the IE 400 Pro is actually similar there's no second driver or anything in here um, it's uh, still just a single driver. So the quality of that driver and its ability to reproduce uh, sound accurately is, is really the big difference that I'm able to discern from the way that Sennheiser talks about these models. I've got the box open here. You get a case with the 400 and 500 Pros, which is really nice. You got something to wrap the in-ears around, which is nice to prolong the life of the cable as well. Inside the box, we have a bunch of different tip options. We've even got an eighth to quarter adapter. So way more extras with this model. Um, again, I'm just gonna stick with the stock tips. So again, it's still just a single dynamic driver in here. We've got frequency response from six Hertz all the way up to 19,000 Hertz. To contrast that with the 100 Pros, um, that's 20 Hertz up to 18K Hertz or 18,000 Hertz. So you are, you know, theoretically, especially in the low end, getting a lot more frequency down there. So I'm really uh, curious to see what the bass response is like with the 400 Pros. The other thing I'll say is that everything I've said about comfort with the 100 Pros is exactly the same. You've got that memory wire here, you've got swivel on the jack connection. The in-ear itself is quite lightweight and low profile, so it's going to sit in the ear really comfortably. Again, if you put a 100 Pro in this year and a 400 Pro in that year, would you be able to tell the difference in terms of how it feels? I don't think so. Um, and that's a good thing, right? So the 400 Pro, if it brings better sound quality, it's not sacrificing comfort at all. Okay, so 400 Pros versus the 100 Pros. Uh, same songs, about the same depth of listening. My initial impression is uh, that there's quite a big difference between the 100 and the 400 Pro models in terms of sound quality, and it's hitting me especially in two areas. The first one is one I sort of expected, and that's the bass response. Uh, just gauging from Sennheiser's own marketing materials on their website, I assumed that the bass response would be much improved, and that's absolutely the case to my ear. The other big difference that I hear is how wide everything sounds. Everything sounds a lot more open, or audio terms, uh, terminology, maybe say the sound stage is a lot wider. So I feel a lot more separation between instruments and in the stereo field as well. So there's more definition between left and right. Everything feels a little bit more spacious. And then individual instruments definitely gain some definition. The vocals feel uh, more articulate comparing the 400s uh, versus the 100 Pros. Um, the other thing is that like a similar volume level, there's definitely an uh, increase in overall clarity to me. And that's a really important thing to talk about when we're talking about in-ears. Um, listening to, you know, perfectly mixed and mastered music with uh, headphones is one thing, but listening to your in-ear monitor mix when you're on stage sometimes is entirely different. So how easy on the ears the in-ears are, how forgiving they are in a way, is really important, especially if you're going to be playing, you know, for a long time at a rehearsal or during a couple of worship services over the weekend. So it's about what I expected. It's definitely a step up in quality. Uh, one other thing I'll say is there's a, a several sizes of foam tips with the 400 series and foam tips. If I were going to be using these on stage, I would definitely be swapping out the silicon tips for foam ones because you're going to get a way better seal over time. And then that's going to lead to improved sound quality. So the 500 Pro in-ears might cause you to raise your eyebrows a little bit, and I, I think that that's understandable. And you might be wondering, is this finally where uh, the line goes to a dual driver or a triple driver model? And no, these are still, at least as far as I can tell from the documentation online, just a dynamic driver. Um, we'll open them up and I think we should be able to see for sure if that is the case. And uh, this is the case. Uh, and then we've got uh, the in-ears right here. 
So in terms of goodies, pretty much the same as what you'd get with the 400s. You've got a nice case here, several different options for tips. Uh, we've got a white cable here. I'm not sure if that's standard across the 500 series or if they just sent us two different options. Probably two different options because the shell here is black. So I think they sent us a different color variant. Now I'm looking inside here and I'm still seeing just the, the single driver. That looks like a dynamic driver. So the technology behind this has got to be what is supposed to bring about the improvement in sound quality. On Sennheiser's website, the big caption for the 500 Pros is more detail. Uh, and the byline is high resolution sound down to the finest details, even at extreme sound pressure levels. Uh, so the 500s, uh, go down to six hertz as well, uh, but then up to 20,000 hertz. The SPL, the sound pressure level for the 500s is 126, and for the 400s, it's 123. So you've got, you know, some technical differences here, uh, but the big question is, does it feel and sound any different? They feel the same. They weigh the same. They look the same. I'm sure that it's going to fit in the ear, you know, the exact same. It's really all about the sound quality here. Okay, so the 500 Pros, uh, how do they compare to the 400 Pros? That was the big question that I went into this video with. So much so that I actually went back and listened again with the 400s and back to the 500s here before turning the camera back on. And the main thing that I've kind of come up with is that the 500 Pros feel more aggressive to me. Um, not bad aggressive, but not necessarily good aggressive either. Everything just feels a little bit more intense. Um, I tried to make sure that that wasn't just a volume difference either and that I wasn't just, you know, maybe these in-ears run a little hotter than the 400s. I don't think that that's what I'm dealing with. I think at, as best as I can judge to be an identical volume, uh, the songs that I listen to for testing these out feel a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more powerful, a little bit maybe punchy is a good word to use, definitely more forward right there. There's a lot of presence uh, that I feel with the 500s. Uh, the bass response, I think, is really similar to the 400 Pros, um, and they have an identical frequency range down there. They both purport to go down to 6 hertz, which is below human hearing. I'm not sure that I have a strong preference between the two. Um, the 500 Pros definitely hit a little bit harder, um, and the soundstage feels a little bit wider because of that, absolutely. There's exceptional clarity, I will say. So if I had to contrast the two, the 400 Pros and the 500 Pros, to me, it's about feel more than quality. They feel different. So comparing 100 Pro to 400 to 500 Pro, I think each of them has their place. None of them feel dramatically over or underpriced. If I had to recommend one, um, I think the 400 Pros really stood out to me. There's a big difference to me in terms of quality of listening experience comparing the 100 Pros to the 400 Pros. So I was thinking, you know, who would I recommend the 500 Pros to? Um, and I was thinking that, you know, we're getting close to the bottom of the custom in-ear price point at that level of investment, 450, you know, 500, $600. And I thought, you know, if you didn't want to buy everybody on your team custom in-ears, which would be very, very expensive, but you did want to give everybody a great listening experience, then something like the 400 or 500 Pro Series might be a good choice because they are universal, they're super comfy, easy to wear. Um, but they're universal, right? And the sound quality is good. So you get everybody their own uh, little pack of buds. Uh, they're responsible for those. And then they're able to use uh, universal in-ears like this and still get an improved listening experience compared to maybe some of the absolutely budget options. And a uh, good chance the longevity is going to be improved because the build quality I do think is exceptional across this whole line of in-ears. So I'd love to hear from you with the in-ears that you go with for your own church or for your own worship team. So leave comments with your recommendations. Maybe you use Sennheiser in-ears. And if you do, um, we'd love to hear your experience, how they have worked out for you, especially over a long period of time. Thanks again to Sennheiser for sending us these. It was a lot of fun to check them out. Really enjoyed it. Uh, if you found the video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel. It's a great way to show your support, help us reach more people. We're really honored by the opportunity to be a part of these conversations and produce videos like this one. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.